Every day, 22 people in the U.S. die waiting for an organ transplant. There are currently 118,000 people on the list, and it grows every year. Scientists at the Salk Institute in La Jolla, California, think they might have the solution. Growing human organs inside genetically altered pigs. In a lab at the Salk Institute, a scientist sucks human stem cells into a tube. Another injects them into a pig embryo. And at that moment, a cross-species embryo, a chimera, both human and pig, begins. The project leaders, Dr. Juan Carlos Ispizua Belmonte and Jun Wu, have spent the past four years trying to make this work. And now, finally, their chimera has begun to grow. So these are pig embryos that may or may not have human elements. Yeah, may or may not. We, we don't know yet. We need to analyze it. Uh, there are several different ways to do that. We need to use, the, for example, a marker that can mark the human cells inside, and we'll be able to visualize it. Or we can analyze the human DNA. The human stem cells grow inside the pig embryo. After four weeks, the scientists euthanize the chimera. For now, those human cells aren't growing as well as the scientists would like. But the goal is eventually, the embryos will grow into a pig with a human organ ready for harvest. This is the first time uh, that we see human cells actually can survive, even though at very low level, uh, can survive in this stage of the pig embryo. So we see, observe about one human cell in 100,000 uh, pig cells. So when people say half human, half pig, it's not right. Before trying to grow human parts in pigs, the Salk scientists prove this could work with rats and mice. So the, this part is a mouse, and this part is a rat. Four years ago, they started to turn off the genetic code telling an embryonic mouse to grow a pancreas. They then implanted the stem cells of a rat into that embryo. And those rat cells grew a rat pancreas inside the mouse. Oh. So what I'm going to show you is a, is a rat and mice chimera, and then you can see the white hair is actually coming from the rat, and the dark brown is uh, where the original mouse color is. So you can see at, you know, they have a different distributions. How special is it what I'm holding? Actually, this is adult. Rat and mouse chimera is very, very rare. I think it, we, we, in our lab, we generated uh, only, I think the oldest chimera, uh, which lives about two years old. Oh, it might be peeing. Poop. It's pooping. When you say chimera, I think of like a Greek mythical monster. Yes, that's unfortunately that's what people being uh, exposed to. I think uh, uh, when we talk about chimera, people always think about the uh, you know the, the lion head, goat body, and serpent tail monster. I do. But actually, when we look at the back in ancient civilization, there are many cultures the chimeras actually are deities. Getting this type of work funded isn't easy. The National Institute of Health won't fund research in human-non-human -human hybrids. So the lab conducts part of the experiment with the University of Murcia in Spain, and they've turned to private donors, like the Moxie Foundation. Someone needs to do it to take a step further, and you need the money to fund this sort of thing. And we would like to do that. Erwin Zahn made his fortune after patenting a part of a zipper in the 1960s. His foundation has given more than $2 million to the Salk Project. I happen to have a bovine heart valve, and my life is better because of it. We're doing this for the benefit of society. Isn't that what we want to do? Isn't that the function of, of foundations? Isn't that what foundations basically do? The scientists can't yet control exactly what happens to the human cells once they implant them into the pig embryo. There is a possibility that these human stem cells could grow into neurons and accidentally create a human mind trapped in a pig. Do you worry about some of those cells migrating to the brain and the pig developing a sort of human brain? Almost 2,000 experiments that we have done with the pig, and we haven't been able to detect a single cell going into the brain. In the future, we have a way that we don't need any animals for this type of work. I'm all for it, but at this stage, we don't have the technology, there's no alternative. There's people waiting in line to, for the availability of the donor organs, and we simply cannot wait any longer. 